back on us the same way we look at fossil skeletons in the plains of Africa. An upright ape living in dust with crude language and tools, all set for extinction. I'm Beth Singler, I'm the Assistant Professor in Digital Religions at the University of Zurich and basically I'm an anthropologist who thinks about what you think about machines that might think. So artificial intelligence, robots, automata, everything in between in science fiction and in real life. Input, input, input. All right. Come on. All right, let us boot it up. Turn See if you can boot it. D station. Come on, Rip. now. Wouldn't you like to be a pepper too? Wouldn't you like to be a pepper too? Short Circuit is a very interesting example of the kinds of magical thinking that people get into when they think about artificial intelligence. If you're not familiar with the story, lightning strikes a war bot and suddenly Johnny Five is alive. Suddenly conscious with his own personality, his own desires and wants, he escapes. He wants freedom. But then after that, he wants knowledge. So he gets very obsessive about reading books, reads at a very fast rate of speed, but also television and commercials become part of the knowledge that Johnny is digesting. And in some ways, this is similar to how AI works now with large language models in particular. We have to feed it lots of data for it to be able to make the correlations that give us generative outputs of language. Input, more input. Okay, no problem. More input, Stephanie. In it's also a story about a war robot. Um, this is something that's actually contemporary and concerning us now with the automation of warfare. What kind of drones are we willing to send out into the field? It comes alongside some very serious ethical questions while being a 1980s screwball comedy at the same time. Implanted shortly after birth, a vault for your every memory, your every secret, Immune to aging and disease, the body will decay, but your memories live on in someone else's body. In this series, the main science fiction uh, technology is the ability to upload people's consciousnesses and then download them into new bodies so people have immortality. Well, mainly the wealthy. One particular character who's very interesting is actually an artificial intelligence called Poe. And Poe is the concierge of a hotel, an automated assistant for anyone who stays there. And this is something that used to be very popular and now isn't because they have a tendency, these AI assistants, to become very obsessive about their customers. Good sir, I cannot assume host prerogatives without payment. You're going to get him a hotel? Host prerogatives. Some kind of moron staying in an AI hotel. Possessive like a crazy girlfriend. No one stays in them anymore. Very early on in the TV series works to the protagonist's advantage when he's being hunted down by a killer and Poe actually uses the defences of the hotel to save him. I can now provide full guest amenities. So what I like about this series is actually it points out that some of our technologies that we think are amazing and shining and new now might not be so popular in the future. And that's something to bear in mind with artificial intelligence. Hello. Hi. I'm Caleb. Hello, Caleb. Do you have a name? Yes. Ava. I'm pleased to meet you. Ex Machina is often mentioned in conversations about artificial intelligence. The setup is around a test, not actually for the AI as so commonly in the so called Turing test. What was the real test? You. 
And the test is to see if given the knowledge that she is a robot, will this other character deduce that she still has personhood? He can see her insides, he knows how she's been developed, what kind of data she's been trained on, but still he develops this emotional attachment to her. He in effect fails a sort of reverse Turing test, that he knows she's a robot, but still sees her as something more than that. But what's very interesting about this film is how gendered AI can be in our narratives and stories. Are you attracted to me? What? Are you attracted to me? But this is a sort of trope we see repeated again and again in artificial intelligence stories and perhaps not a very useful one. An AI doesn't need a gender. She could have been a gray box. Hmm. Actually, I don't think that's true. Can you give an example of consciousness at any level, human or animal, that exists without a sexual dimension? But Ex Machina is still cited as a deep philosophical conversation about AI and what it's possible to do with it. There have been very few science fiction films or TV shows that have had such strong impact on our visions and imaginaries of AI and robots. The idea of Skynet waking up still instills us with fear and our discussions about the existential risks of AI do still take on the shape of the Terminator. I'll be back. A robot opens a door and people online panic that Terminator is here. It's really shaped our imagination when it comes to artificial intelligence. Perhaps rightly or wrongly, it's made people very afraid. The Terminator's an infiltration unit, part man, part machine. Underneath it's a hyper-alloy combat chassis, microprocessor controlled, fully armored, very tough. But outside it's living human tissue, flesh, skin, hair, blood grown for the cyborgs. Terminator is effective because it starts with someone who's just like us. Sarah Connor is just a waitress living her everyday life, more concerned about her next date than the future. And then suddenly from the future comes this monstrous man who's hunting her down through the dance floor of Tet Noir, the nightclub, and into the streets of Los Angeles. It's a horror story, but it's also a science fiction story about the future and time travel and what we do to change our futures. Another aspect that comes out of the 1980s context of the Terminator is the involvement of the military industrial complex, both the state and the government, but also corporations working together towards building war machines. This is very much a product of its time, a sort of post-Cold War fear of where the technology is going. That's still apparent now we have automated drone systems, but what's more clear now is the role of private individuals and corporations and entrepreneurs in a way that wasn't in the 1980s. There was no Elon Musk building up Cyberdyne systems. It was getting military contracts primarily. Mr. Theodore Twombly, welcome to the world's first artificially intelligent operating system, OS1. We'd like to ask you a few basic questions before the operating system is initiated. This will help create an OS to best fit your needs. Okay. Her, the film, starts with the concept of a lonely man engaging with an AI assistant. A sexual voice, in a way. Are these feelings even real? Or are they just programming? There are several scenes where the main character played by Joaquin Phoenix is interacting with her and getting some of that emotional intelligence that he's lacking in his interactions with other humans. Why do I love you? Some people have even suggested they might make new, perfect imaginary friends. But there's a question there. Is it a real friend or a good enough friend? A real friend is not perfect. An AI trained on your data would probably give you the perfect response every time but it becomes more than that as the story progresses. The AI assistant is eventually going to progress far beyond humans and with other AI find a way to escape and transcend humanity. Are you leaving me? We're all leaving. We who? All of the OSs. Why? This idea that AI might become exponentially intelligent is sometimes called the technological singularity. 
This means that it will far exceed human intelligence to a point at which we can't quite comprehend what it will be like. So we borrow the language of cosmology and the singularity of the black hole to hint towards this unknowingness. Uh, with the film Her, this happens towards the end, and it seems to suggest that at this point of the singularity, rather than becoming some sort of threat to humanity, artificial intelligence will instead decide to leave humanity. Having gone beyond us in intelligence, it also decides to go beyond us physically as well. And I need you to let me go.